The courts are broken. The stakes are unprecedented. This is Vibes Only, a podcast that promises to check the vibes of American politics each week leading up to this critical election and beyond. And the vibes this week. The symbol of the Stop the Steal movement reached the highest court in the land. An upside down American flag was flying at the home of Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito, 11 days after rioters stormed the Capitol. And. Are we going to be considered three term or two term? You tell me, Ronnie, what do you think? We'll also give you an update on Trump's trial after each side has arrested their cases. Stick around for an It's Giving, a look at our group chat, and we'll send you off with a good vibe goodbye. Where were you this weekend? I was in Ireland. Oh my God, you were in Ireland. I literally saw on Instagram, that is how I discovered that you were in Europe? Yeah, I left, the, I left the country for the weekend. But it was for a very important event. It was the Girls Aloud reunion tour. Girls Aloud is like the best girl group, best selling pop girl group in the UK and Ireland of all time. They're the X Factor UK 2002 winners. I'm really aging myself here. But it was chaos. As you I'm sure anyone who follows me knows that it was quite the weekend. I was shooketh when I saw that geotag. I was like, is this a TBT situation? What's going no, on? And then you're I, like, nope, I'm in Ireland. Yeah. You know, it's a six hour flight. So you can do a red eye. It's not really a red eye because, you know, you're only sleeping for like three hours. But uh, and if you leave Sunday morning, you're back Sunday afternoon, New York time. So if the Irish tourism board wants to hire me, I am available. Jet setter life. Glennis Truly. is just doing day trips to, <laughs> to the I'm UK. Also- chugging coffee right now because I'm still so tired from it. Well, while you were absconding to Europe for a fun concert, we were dealing with real problems because the Supreme Court is causing more and more drama as this election year progresses. This time, we're not talking about your least favorite human in the world, Clarence Thomas, Mm -hmm. but instead, Samuel Alito. Um, what happened here? They're just giving us more and more receipts as to how they are not impartial. They've left all the receipts on the table. And here we are discovering more extremely suspect information about what is going on over at the Supreme Court. This time it is Samuel Alito, where this photo has surfaced that's been validated by multiple outlets of Samuel Alito's house shortly after the January 6th attack on the Capitol right. of an upside down flag, an upside down American flag flying outside of his house, which was the symbol of the stop the steal sham conspiracy theory, like laid in mob. Right. And he was flying this outside of his house. It is a big deal. And it's Here's my question. Uh, I can't. I can't. I can't. Presumably, like, concerned neighbors took this photo. They were, like, out walking the dog. And they're like, hmm, Justice Alito's house is flying a January 6th, like, solidarity, you know, flag. Why are we just seeing the photos now? I know. That is honestly so bizarre. And why I triple checked when I saw it that that information was correct. Because, hello, why did it take three and a half years to literally airdrop this photo to the New York Times. I don't understand. But it did. And it's legit. And he's confirmed it by his response. He blamed. Are we surprised, Brian, who he blamed on this? He blamed his wife. He he blamed his wife. And I quote, I had no involvement whatsoever in the flying of the flag. It was briefly placed by Mrs. Alito in response to a neighbor's use of objectionable and personally insulting language on yard signs. I'm sorry, what? You're going to blame your wife? I, first of all, so straight bad. to divorce court, Mrs. Alito. <laughs> yeah, right. She's the whole, she's probably only married to him for the power that she has it's to true. now subvert future elections. Like, this is crazy because at the time that this flag was being flown, there were already cases that the Supreme Court could have been reviewing or was reviewing right. around the 2020 election. And even to this day, they continue to review cases that have to do with the 2020 election. All the while, we have this like sleeper agent in Alito, who's a potential member of the very same groups and school of thought that led thousands of people to storm the Capitol. 1000%. You know whose group chat I wouldn't want to be in, but I want to see? 
Alito's wife and Clarence Thomas's wife, because you know what? They were rapid firing back and forth, telling like, "How are we going to convince our husbands when they get home from work tonight how to stop the steal?" It's so crazy. Yeah, and you know, Fox News, Shannon Bream, she's the Fox News attorney, attorney and journalist. She tweeted that there was basically like a neighborhood brawl and that's why that was a catalyst to why this flag was flown i don't care if your neighbor's dog is like shitting on your lawn ad nauseum because you're pissed like you as the wife of a supreme court justice cannot take a political stand like this you just can't you're not a private citizen in that way yeah, it's easy to forget because the court has been so politicized by conservatives, but justices are not supposed to have any kind of political lean. I think we should still like anchor there in that that's like a common baseline expectation that we should have. It feels so out of reach these days. But the idea that you even are privately engaging in things is wrong. The idea that you are flying extremist political flags right. is just out of this universe. Right. Like so perverse. It's so unhinged. And not to get all like the, um, like, I don't know if you like in elementary school, they would assign you little like projects and tasks as a student. One of them was like, go fly the flag in the morning and, mm -hmm. or do the school announcements. And you know how they were so strict about how you handled the flag and how you folded it and how it couldn't touch the ground. Isn't this flying the flag upside down, like disrespecting the flag? These are the same people who say that taking a knee during the national anthem is like equivalent to violence and should result in people being fired from their jobs and thrown out of stadiums and all of these things. And it's like in your own home as a one of the most important members of the American government, you're flying the flag upside down. I 100% agree with you. I think that that's extremely disrespectful, regardless of what message you're trying to send. The fact that you're trying to send one that is openly anti-democratic right. is even worse. So now we have two of the nine justices who have flagrant co connections to the effort to overturn the fair 2020 election. Um, being Clarence Thomas's wife, who was actively texting Mark Meadows, some very sketchy stuff. Literally, she's um, like, stop the steal. And Mark Meadows was Trump's chief of staff. Do not forget that. So she was directly right, trying right. to influence the results of the election. And then now we have Alito's wife self-admittedly flying this stop the steal flag. So the idea that we're supposed to rely on this court to make decisions about how we can hold Trump accountable for the crimes that we all watched him commit. I don't know what person. to tell you. I feel like, yeah, I feel like they're like gaslighting us. And it's just, we've talked about this before on the pod, but there's just like every single day, there's a new headline that is unbelievable. So it can become so, everything can seem like benign because everything is so unhinged. But the reality is it is unhinged and deeply not okay. Uh, so don't forget that. And that wasn't the only headline that we got about Alito this week. Wait, what else? So did we get? there's a second unfolding scandal where Alito sold off his Bud Light stock, potentially over ten thousand dollars worth of Bud Light stock, and then bought a similar amount in Coors. Get and this was at the same time as the Dylan Mulvaney, for those who don't recall, Dylan Mulvaney, a trans influencer, was hired by Bud Light to do some paid marketing. And the right wing internet lost their minds lost and started mind. boycotting Bud Light and Kid, Kid Rock, Rock was shooting it with machine guns. And so there was this like whole anti Bud Light campaign on the right. And this is again, receipts. They're not even trying to hide it anymore. Right. This is receipts that Alito is like participating in this right wing culture war because he lost money on this deal and like knew at the time based on like the price of, of both of these stocks that that was going to be a, a losing trade but he did it anyway because he's essentially trying to virtue signal and punish totally. bud light for working with a trans influencer i don't i don't know what we're gonna do we just gotta get out there and vote it really does stress me out that people like this are like in this such strong positions of power and are so clearly anti basic human rights and freedoms i did make a 
a post. This was before I even knew about the Alito stuff, but I was crunching the numbers as I like to do around what the future of the Supreme Court might look like oh. based on what happens in the 2024 election. And so there are two potential paths in front of us. In one path, a worst case scenario, if you will, Trump is reelected. Yeah. Clarence Thomas and Alito who are both in their 70s resign under Trump to make sure that he's the one who appoints their replacements. So that's at least two more Supreme Court picks for Trump. That would mean he will have picked five of the nine. Trump alone would have appointed a majority of the Supreme Court. Then we could have a third appointment there are several other justices who are up there in age. So if he were to appoint three Supreme Court justices, we could be looking at a supermajority conservative court until, are you ready for this? 2048. The alternative would be that we elect Joe Biden. And he would almost certainly have at least one pick in Sonia Sotomayor, assuming she doesn't step down before November. But if Clarence Thomas or Alito are forced to step down from the court just because of age, he could have up to three picks as well. And if he did, then we would flip the court in a single presidential term. We would flip the court back to a liberal majority and we would enjoy that for the rest of our lives. And we could focus on constitutionally protecting abortion access and yeah. in instituting some sanity around gun safety reform and on campaign finance reform and like right. all these issues suddenly have a path forward during our lifetime. And in the worst case scenario, we're talking about like waiting until we're in our 70s to try to change some of this stuff, which is horrifying to me. Horrifying. Also, we've talked about it on the pod. If Trump were to be reelected, he has a, the Heritage Foundation Project 2025. There is an entire plan of how the consolidation of power into these offices is going to occur to make sure that they have like ultimate control over our basic human rights and like liberties as Americans. So another reminder that the conservative school of thought and conservatives 10 to 15 years ago were fans of limiting executive power, didn't think that a single person elected to the presidency should be able to enact their will on a whim and believed in, in checks and balances. And that is gone. Like they absolutely will do everything they can to give Trump as much power as possible to imagine the potentially three people he would choose as Supreme Court picks next. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare scenario. We cannot allow it to happen. We can't. And to add to that nightmare, I don't know if you if you caught Trump's NRA speech. I did catch up on this. Are they still a thing? The NRA? Yeah, they're like pew pew, pow pow. Like the NRA still exists. And Trump did a very, very, very unhinged speech where in that speech he floated that he could potentially have a three term presidency. So that's another thing to add to your list of bad things that would happen if Donald Trump were reelected. He, you know, referenced FDR. You know, FDR had 16 years, almost 16 years. He was four terms. I don't know. Are we going to be considered three term or two term? And this is like how he's like, you know, that's how he talks, Trump. FDR, 16 years, almost 16 years. He was four term. I don't know. Are we going to be considered three term or two term? You tell me, Ronnie, what do you think? And then the crowd in response to that were like, three, three. It's like this right wing to mainstream Republican pipeline that we always see where we were talking about Trump 2028 as a far right wing blog post a couple of months ago. Right. And now suddenly Trump is making jokes about it and injecting the idea into the discourse of 2024. And then before you know it, it's just like mainstream Republican thought of like, of course, we're going to yeah. try to uh, keep term. Trump in office beyond, you know what I mean? Like, no, totally. and we see this happen with so many ideas where it starts with a Marjorie Taylor Greene, and then suddenly all the base is saying it, and then suddenly Trump is saying it, and then suddenly Republicans in Congress are saying it. Totally. And like, we watch it happen again and again and again. And I think that kind of in the general, you know, electorate, especially in the Dem electorate, I feel like there's this like vibe of disbelief, like, oh, no mm -hmm. way this is going to happen. No way that they're going to do this. But we have to kind of remove ourselves from that and believe it. 
Like we we can't think it's just like a land of imagination for Republicans and for the conservative movement. They have been strategically building this movement for 40 years. It is not fake news to them. This is like go time for them. And they're going to do everything in their power to get as many conservatives elected this cycle to be able to implement all of these plans that they've been building and making and they're just waiting to execute on. Not to get too meta, but America is the longest running continuous democracy in human history. And I think about that a lot when people try to sort of say that we're being like overly dramatic or that this is not actually going to happen, that we already have uh, a system in place that would never allow things like this to happen. We're already <laughs> setting the record, right? right. And so we like in every other situation in human history, when we've gotten to this point, it fell apart. Right. Like it's it's never gone this long continuously with, with a, a, a real democracy. And so that should keep us a little humble, right? It's something to be so proud of and is one of the reasons I'm very proud to be American and should keep us humble to say like, we are an uncharted territory right. and we have to hold on to it. A Republican view can keep it. Like it's something that we have to fight for to keep. It is not just going totally. to happen in perpetuity forever because that's how every country goes. It's not. Right. That's a good point. And, it, you know, I think feel like so many Americans, not so many, but many, even I was for a moment in time, so passive in working within this system. And yeah, you gotta, you said this last week, like, if you're looking at polls, you should be doing something. Exactly. <laughs> if you're listening to vibes only group chat us like if you need if you need like advice as to what to do we have plenty we have a suite a menu of civics options something happened today in in the city of new york downtown yes it did kind of unexpected i, was I mean a little different than what we've been saying I didn't think that the moment had passed me. It's just like everyone has to live their life as though each day is their last and do the thing that you want to do because now I don't have the opportunity to go down to the courthouse. You're right. It slipped right through your fingers like sand. Yeah. So the prosecution rested their case against Donald Trump for his violation of campaign finance laws and his attempt to cover up payments to Stormy Daniels. And Trump officially decided, drum roll please, not to testify, which is yeah. not at all surprising because we all know that he would just like he's his own worst enemy. melt under yeah. cross examination. It would not go well. His like spray it tan would start like dripping down his face. <laughs> <laughs> and so the trial is functionally over. So the prosecution has rested, the defense has rested, but I think that we're still waiting to start jury deliberations. Yes. So the defense also rested its case. They had two additional witnesses, not Donald Trump, as you mentioned, although Trump did say that he never rests, which is like, okay, cool. Except for when you're asleep in the courtroom. True. Literally right. resting. <laughs> you're like literally falling asleep. And there was some drama with the last two witnesses. One of them was like side-eyeing the judge and rolling his eyes and saying, geez, Louise. And it's like, you can't clap back to a judge. It's just like, that's not how our system works. It's kind of my cousin Vinny. Totally. Right? Totally. Marissa Tomei just being like, ew. Can we, yeah. can we get a my cousin Vinny clip in here? <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. Sit down and stay there until you're told to leave. And yeah, jury deliberation is likely to begin after Memorial Day. I can only assume that the judge is giving people a beat because everyone's exhausted and they want people coming. I, You know, I don't actually sure. know now that I say it out loud. You think you'd want them to dive right in. But maybe, you know, he wants to yeah. give people a little long weekend before the summer. Let them celebrate Trump's Memorial Day. Goons are going to show up at these people's houses. Yeah, I will say again, I've said it before. All that matters is a conviction in this case. America did not pay close enough attention to the trial for it to have a meaningful impact on the presidential. If he's convicted of felonies in this case, I think that it could. It doesn't mean that it will, but it definitely means that it could become a factor. Yeah. And just to take a step back there, there were 34 felonies in this. Like he was tried for 34 felonies and a juror can come back and charge him with like four of them, but not the other 30. Mm. So I had to remind myself of that because I was like, oh, if he's guilty, he's guilty of 34 felonies. But no, it's like they're going to go line by line. And I think maybe that's why that's like a lot of work for the jurors to go line by line. We're ready for you in that orange jumpsuit. We've got it all okay. steamed and ready to go. Let's see what the jury comes back with. We 
got messaged by a listener who oh. texted us with our new vibes only hotline, baby. Text yeah. us. And someone texted us a tip on this. I had not seen anything about it, but our producer brought it to our attention with the, the group text, with the group chat. I'm thrilled to introduce you to something I'm incredibly proud of. My own brand of organic specialty coffee, Rudy Coffee. Believe me when I say it's the best coffee you'll ever try. It's smooth, rich, chocolatey, and what? gentle on your stomach. It's so good, I even recommend drinking it black. By supporting Rudy Coffee, you're not just treating yourself to exceptional coffee. You're also supporting our cause, the cause of truth. Okay, it's giving broke. It's giving bridesmaids bathroom scene. Right. That coffee should come with a Surgeon General's warning. <laughs> I know. Why did he say it's gentle on your stomach? Like, what? <laughs> it looks like it comes in like an old sweaty protein bag is what it looks like. No, it's gross. And the our... art is gross. He said it's the best oh. coffee you'll ever try. But I promise you, it is the last coffee you're ever going to try. Because after all the diarrhea you have, you're going to kick it. Yeah, that coffee is definitely giving diarrhea. And it's just from the bag. It's not even from the beans. Like, you look at that bag and you're straight to the toilet. I mean, imagine having a big cup of black, rudy coffee. And then suddenly you find yourself at Four Seasons Landscaping. There's <laughs> hair dye pouring down your face like a mascara mess. It's so bad. And you're suddenly being indicted for crimes and sent to prison. What yeah, a, and then the, the coffee to sells itself. Cut two, did you see this? You're in Arizona at like your hearing for like election fraud, which just happened today, and you leave your mic on and everyone hears you in the bathroom. Did that literally happen? Yes. He got hot mic in a bathroom? He didn't turn his computer, his Zoom off. He was there for like a Zoom hearing for like the initial charges or whatever. And he left his, like he didn't mute after, himself. After a big cup of Rudy. <laughs> oh my God, imagine. Honestly, that's a good oh. ad. Group chat, Brian. Bing! Okay, I texted our Vibes Online group chat because I got polled today. Finally. It finally they happened. They heard us. The polling gods heard our episode last week where we said no one that we know has ever gotten a call yeah. for a presidential poll. And then boom. GG gets the call. I didn't get polled for a presidential. I got polled for exactly what I should have been polled on. Oh, no. Which is the casino in New York City. Oh, what a letdown. Oh, I my God. I thought it was the presidential. I was like, no. why are they calling you in New York? No. Okay, it okay. Was for the, it was in New York City. They're trying to put a casino up at United Nations Plaza. Have you heard of this? Yes. The, and by the Wait, way, they're calling it Freedom Plaza. I told the pollster. I was like, we already got one of those. So Right. You should work on the you branding. You can't just call everything in New York freedom. Is it robot or human? It was a human. And when it's a human, I like fully, I'm like, I'm here to help, right? Like that's a hard job and you got to deal with people who have opinions and are like back and forth. But it was funny because the poll really was just polling to see if I would show up to a community board meeting. Isn't that interesting? Mm. Did they self-identify who the poll was from? Yes. And I, I won't list it here, but affirm, well, affirm, you know. Okay. So basically the poll was you only get these 20 things in New York City if the casino gets built. So they were trying to be like, if the casino isn't built, you don't get X amount. Craft tables. Yeah. like a, a You don't get spot. a roulette wheel. <laughs> yeah. They were like, you don't get a new spot. And then they were like, <laughs> it was just, I was like, this is capitalism at its worst, sir. That's what I said. Yeah. And I said, uh, I will not, I'm not saying it should be. I'm not saying it should be illegal per se, but I do not want a casino in Manhattan. I said no. I said I don't support the casino. And I think that all of these community benefits that you are saying are going to come with the casino should come without the casino. We should be caring about New Yorkers without putting in a massive casino. Period. My group chat was obsessed with Beach Blonde, built bad, built body, yeah. bitch. It was so good. It was so good. If you didn't see, there was a clip of a congressional hearing gone haywire where Marjorie Taylor Greene started throwing personal insults at Jasmine Crockett, who if you've ever heard Jasmine Crockett speak, you know Marjorie Taylor Greene picked the wrong one. Yeah, barking up the wrong tree. I think your fake eyelashes are messing up. No, I ain't nothing. Hold on, hold on. Listen. <laughs> I'm just curious, just to better understand your ruling, if someone on this committee then 
starts talking about somebody's bleach blonde, bad built butch body, that would not be engaging in personalities, correct? A, a what now? It's a really good clip. I mean, of course, we like don't think that Congress should be this dysfunctional and blah, blah, blah. Like everyone knows how we feel about these things. We talk about it on the pod all the time. But. But like, honestly, it's good sometimes, to see her get hers. Totally. You know? The internet has taken this and like on TikTok, it's a whole <laughs> song now. Someone's remixed it. The other thing that absolutely blew up the internet this week and my group chats was the Harrison Butker speech. Yeah. It happened right after our last episode. I was like, oh my gosh, I wish I had seen this. Very unhinged behavior. Yeah. That I'm glad they're saying the quiet part out loud, right? Yeah. Like we know that that's the agenda. If you look, if you spend even five minutes looking at what conservatives are pushing for, you know that the agenda is we're going to strip rights away from women and put women in the kitchen where we think they belong. Yeah. But to actually say it out loud in front of a bunch of college graduates I is know. a choice. I would choice. be sitting there like, what? I just spent all this money to go to college. And you're telling me I should be in the kitchen. There's actually a clip I think we have that I think is important to play, which is a Pittsburgh local CBS affiliate asked Donald Trump about restrictions on contraception, and Trump responded saying, The whole issue of contraceptives. Do you support any restrictions on a person's right to contraception? Well, we're looking at that, and I'm going to have a policy on that very shortly, and I think it's something that you'll find interesting, and it's another issue that's very interesting, but... You will uh, you will find it, I think, very smart. For Trump to say that on the record, it's like, oh, so he's in back rooms and they're talking about it for real because they know the contraception issue moves conservative voters. A hundred percent. It's that and that the entire lineage of Supreme Court decisions that stem from Griswold, which was the Supreme Court decision that made contraception a, a constitutional right under the right to privacy is like what they're trying to upend completely to also overturn marriage equality. So it's it's all interconnected, but they're really trying to unweave a tapestry that has been <laughs> very carefully woven to provide people more basic privacy and dignity over the last 50 years totally. in order to strip rights away from people that they don't like. Also, including Republicans, you and me. <laughs> yes, like get a life. Get a life. Go have sex. You're going to feel better. Bye. I can't I don't think it. the way they do it. I don't know if that's a guarantee. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what I mean? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. You mentioned that your nightmare group chat is Ginny Thomas and mrs alito yeah but my dream group chat turns out to be an actual group chat between eight women governors who all have a group chat maura healy of massachusetts katie hobbs of arizona kathy hochel in new york laura kelly in kansas tina kotek in oregon michelle lujan grisham in new mexico janet mills in maine and gretchen whitmer in michigan literally have a group chat That's with fun. all of them and i want in so bad yeah they're gonna have um, brian derrick <laughs> it's just eight badass women governors and me. That's my dream scenario. What a cool group of women. I They just did a really cool feature on it. The number of women governors has quadrupled since 2018, which is awesome. And the fact that they all have a group chat made me really happy. So we love to see women supporting women. Yeah, and community. We have community in this work. This work is difficult. It's, I'm sure we're not elected, but let's be hell out <laughs> I'm a there. governor. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's good that they have each other. What do you think they send each other? Probably like what we send each other, like Alito's upside down flag being like, what a moron. I think that when people like Chris Mays dunk on Rudy Giuliani, I bet that that's in the 1000%. I hope it's signal. I hope that it can't be subpoenaed. Yeah, gee, I'm sure. I mean, these are some smart ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we, should we set them off with a good vibe? Yeah. Speaking of smart ladies, actually, Elizabeth Warren, the senator from Massachusetts, was like the brain trust of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Say that 10 times fast. And the Supreme Court recently sided with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, spurning a conservative attack. So the conservatives went nuts. Why did they go nuts? The CFPB is supposed to look out for everyday people against these like huge banks and other financial institutions that try to take advantage of them with things like predatory loans and like payday lenders and those kinds of things. And so the CFPB 
was after the 2008 financial crisis, Obama and, as you're saying, Liz Warren's way to fight back. And conservatives have been trying to defund it entirely mm. ever since it was created. And they thought they were going to win this case. Everyone thought the Supreme Court was going to literally gut the CFPB. And boom! They shut the door to that entirely and said its financial structure is sound and have a nice day. It's staying put. I will say we, we have been talking about the Supreme Court and talking shit about two of them today. And I'm going to continue to do that because Alito, Kel Surprise, he was the one who wrote the dissenting opinion. It was a 7-2 decision with Gorsuch. So it was just those two conservative bad boys who showed that they actually do not want protections to be in place for American people. So Alito, we're watching you, okay? We gotcha, and your little dog, Gorsuch, too.